present For the Record with Neil Heinen. A conversation with Wisconsin 1st District Congressman Brian Stile is next on For the Record. Thanks for joining me. I'm Neil Heinen. For the first two decades of the 21st century, Wisconsin's 1st Congressional District has been represented by Paul Ryan who, among other things, was both Speaker of the House and a Vice Presidential candidate. Big shoes to fill. Brian Stile is not only Ryan's successor, he is a freshman in the minority. Nevertheless, Congressman Stile has already begun to chart his own course, and some of his strategies are refreshing in the context of politics and Washington, D.C. today. And I'm pleased to welcome to his first appearance on For the Record, Janesville native, former manufacturing businessman, former UW regent, and one-time aide to Paul Ryan, Congressman Brian Stile. Congressman, welcome. Thanks for having me nice on. To, yeah, nice to see you. So, I mean, you worked in Washington, you worked in Speaker Ryan's office, but just tell us, I mean, in, in the context of your expectations, what's it been like? I, I describe it to some people sometimes is it's like I got a starting position on the Green Bay Packers offensive line. I'm not going to be the guy scoring touchdowns. My goal is to move the ball forward a few yards every time. And I'm not shocked anytime you jump up and somebody smacks into you. That's the defensive line. If you have that attitude, uh, I think you can make some progress. You kind of have the ability to dive into the weeds, in particular on policy, and to try to make a difference. But at the same time, uh, I think we have a real problem in Washington with entrenched partisanship. What do I mean by that? Everybody knows that there's general partisanship. But let me give you let me give you a little bit of an example. You win the election. It's a Tuesday night. You wake up Wednesday morning. You end up going out to Washington that next Monday. Uh, all the all the new members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans, you stay at a courtyard Marriott and you ride the elevator down in the morning and you come out the front door. You're all going to the Capitol, and there's a bus for Democrats and a bus for Republicans. The institutionalization of the partisanship in Washington is really part of the problem, uh, and it prohibits people from naturally bridging that Democrat-Republican divide and ultimately to take on some of this transformational change that we all need as a country. We can, we can fight about how we do it, but I think we all are well aware that a $20 trillion debt with a growing deficit, that our immigration problem, how do we shore up Social Security? These are problems that need to be addressed, but underlying that, we need to have relationships, Democrats and Republicans, to be able to address those problems and to be able to really tackle them so we can continue uh, this American democracy. What's the class like? I mean, did you even get a chance to share thoughts about the two buses with any of your colleagues? Uh, I would say a lot of the a lot of the freshmen are frustrated. There's you know there's a bell curve of who's out there, right? And so the the further you are from the center, maybe the more well known uh, you become. There's a lot of uh, Democratic freshmen that are household names now, uh, but there's also a lot of folks uh, in the middle that want to address the problems that ran because they believe uh, that we can make a difference and a change and come together to tackle some of these uh, really big transformational problems. And there's a lot of frustration in the class with what's in Washington and the fact that it doesn't work. I mean, there's 90 new freshmen, there's 60 Democrats, 30 Republicans, and almost to a T, everyone ran because they want to make a change, a positive change, but also we're frustrated with Washington and its inability to get things done. And so some of it's going to require us tackling some of this, the big institutional problems uh, that we see in Washington. Yeah. Um, everybody talks about partisanship and bipartisanship congressman and there's there's tremendous pressure from leadership at times um, however and, and and I don't want to exaggerate this but I it, it has been noticeable I think that your first bill that you introduced um, the, the work that you're doing um, just with the middle class jobs caucus for example is bipartisan I mean how targeted is that in your mind well I'm very focused on getting things done uh, and so in a period of time of divided government with a Republican president, with a Democratic House, the only thing that's actually going to get signed into law over the course of this session of Congress is if it has bipartisan support. And so there are issues where Democrats and Republicans can reasonably come together uh, and try to, to get something done. So I've worked on how do we improve the process in which we actually set 
the federal budget. So part of the problem is that some people want to spend on this and some people want to spend on this. And sometimes the answer that comes out of Washington is spend on both. I think we can set up a better process and get a better result. I worked on a, a bill that relates to how do we fund uh, small businesses, make sure that companies uh, in Wisconsin and Janesville and Kenosha and across our state have access to capital to be able to expand. Took that idea, worked with my colleagues, uh, and as you noted, was able to get that bill on the House floor, although Nancy Pelosi is our speaker, and was able to get a vote uh, and ultimately pass that bill 417 to two. Lost one Democrat and one Republican. To me, that means I ran it right up the middle. Ultimately, that type of work, I think, will result in more successes in the future. I'm working on a bill as it relates to human trafficking. I right, sit on which the, is your, fir your first one. That right? was the, the first bill I introduced. Yep. Um, and I've been working on that because it's, it's, it's an issue that Democrats and Republicans can come together and see eye to eye on. And if I was on the, the House floor, so if you, if you accidentally turn on C-SPAN late at night and you see the members milling around, that's really your time to go and speak to your colleagues. And if you saw me in Washington, I'd have a, a card in my pocket uh, with a short summary of the bill, uh, and I walk around and speak to my colleagues, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, there was the, the day I sat down uh, with Mark Pocan on the House floor. Uh, we walked through the bill. He's now uh, on board the bill. Um, you know, and across the board, we're getting Democrat and Republican support. It's an issue where somebody needed to carry the water to try to attack this problem. Is it the transformational change that we, that we need as a nation? These bills aren't, but it's a step in the right direction. And sometimes I think it's so important to celebrate the wins that we're moving things forward. We're building these relationships that are ultimately going to be needed to address the real transformational change. Uh, that's why I ran and I think what we need as a country. Just one last question on, 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 the, on the environment, the climate in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, most of the uh, of the noise, most of the images we see are of the president and of leadership of both parties who appear just inflexibly partisan and un un unwilling to, uh, to compromise on any significant level. And yet for the majority of members of Congress, you know, what do you, what do you see as opportunities to actually get some things done, Congressman? I, I think it's going to require us building up trust relationships across the aisle. Uh, so I spent a lot of my time... That could influence leadership? I, I think it's going to be required. I think that there are people who reside in power and they're benefited by the current partisan structure. And so it's going to take individuals to be able to bridge some of that divide because we have to tackle these big transformational problems. We have to tackle it. It's, it's, it's incumbent upon us uh, as, as, as elected officials to do just that. And so I work... Uh, kind of day in and day out as to how do we build these relationships? How do we get some of the small wins in place so that we can ultimately tackle some of these larger problems that are out there? Yeah. You just got back from a, a trip to Israel that turned out to be a little more controversial than, than you might have thought, and we're going to talk about that when we come back with Congressman Brian Stile right after this. For the record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. Really? It's car buying season at Nissan's bottom line model year-end event. Save big on the last of our 2019s, like the tech advanced Rogue. Get 0% financing for up to 36 months on Nissan Rogue. Well, it's going to be a beautiful sunny day today, and we can expect much more of the same. Motorcycles are not invisible. But they can seem that way to drivers who aren't paying close attention. Look twice for motorcycles. Seeing them is saving them. Shopping online, hmm? you're probably wasting money. Whether you're buying another pair of cool shoes, tech, gaming gear, or even dinner, you're probably overpaying. That's why there's Honey, your smart shopping assistant that helps you save time and money. We all know about promo codes, but why look for them on your own when Honey can do it for you? Here's how it works. With just a single click, Honey will find every working code on the internet and apply the best one to your cart. Why, thank you, Honey. Now you're the boss. Start saving on all your favorite sites, over 20,000 of them. 
Honey has already found people over a billion dollars in savings. And it has over 100,000 five-star reviews to prove it. Add it to your browser with two clicks. Honey, the smart shopping assistant that helps you save time and money. car buying season at Nissan's bottom line model year end event. Save big on the last of our 2019s, like the tech advanced Rogue. Get 0% financing for up to 36 months on Nissan Rogue. I am back with Wisconsin Congressman Brian Stile from Janesville. Um, Congressman Stile was on a recent trip to Israel. The headlines were all about who didn't go, Congressman. But uh, what, was the, what was the purpose of the trip and what was your impressions? It was a bipartisan trip uh, to go see firsthand uh, what's going on in the Middle East, in particular, what's going on in Israel, uh, one of our greatest allies in the Middle East, uh, and a beacon of democracy. It's an opportunity, one of the most impactful things for myself uh, was walking in the Golan Heights on the border between Israel and Syria uh, with basic binoculars that you could get at uh, any store around here, uh, looking across and seeing firsthand the impact of the Syrian civil war. Okay. Um, as you look at the significant issues that are, that are facing Israel day in and day out, I think it's of, of paramount importance that members, Democrats and Republicans, are there seeing firsthand and are able to also ask the leaders of both Israel uh, and the, uh, the Palestinians yep. where are we at and how are we ultimately going to get to a better place. Did it, did it change your thinking being there about the relationship that we have with Israel, about the role of Israel in, in the entire Middle East? It strengthened my understanding of the unique security situation uh, that Israel finds itself in. Uh, when you're down along the border with Gaza where rockets are being fired on a, a regular basis uh, from, uh, the West Bank, or from, from the Gaza Strip into uh, Israel, you see firsthand uh, what they call Iron Dome, which is effectively ground-based rockets in Israel that can shoot down uh, rockets coming from uh, the Gaza Strip, uh, largely funded by United States um, military We're some pictures of military the support, yep, yep. and so when you see uh, those that missile dome uh, battery operation, that kind of cements your understanding of the importance of the U.S.-Israeli uh, relationship, which is so strong today, and I think needs to continue uh, into the future. What's the what is the the role of Congress moving forward now in in, in that relationship? Uh, I mean, again, we find ourselves at kind of a critical time. Uh, and and with with legitimate you know concerns for a two-party state for for the for the protection of, of the Palestinian people what, it, what how do you perceive Congress's um, position right now well there, there's a number of issues that come before us on a regular on a regular basis BDS which is the boycott divestiture and sanctions right. uh, that some people uh, want to push uh, against Israel. I think it's important that Congress stands up against that to make sure that Israel's economy is able to move forward and so that it can defend itself uh, from its unique uh, security position. I think it's important that we review um, our military support of Israel. We're spending a little north of $3 billion a year uh, in support of the defense of Israel. Uh, that should be reviewed, uh, and I think that that relationship is, uh, is strong and should continue forward. Uh, but being able to be there firsthand and look across, say, the Israel uh, Lebanon border and see Hezbollah flags flying, uh, but a short distance away, really cements the understanding of the unique threats uh, that Israel faces day in and day out. How concerned are you in general, and, and uh, personally, but also, you know, in, in, in terms of Congress, about the, about the role of the United States in the world right now? Um, you know, whether it is seeing, um, uh, you know, different governments ar around the world that are facing similar challenges to what we're facing, to, you know, the recent spat with Denmark over Greenland. I mean, it just calls into question how we're viewed, Congressman. In our role in the world, what's your perception? Well, I think it's important to be uh, negotiating from a position of strength, and so I think the fact uh, that we've reinvested in our military over the past handful of years, strengthening the military's uh, position uh, to be able to react if there is a situation that required it is important. Uh, and then I think it's important that we stand with our allies, in particular uh, those that support our values and our, our democratic values, in particular uh, around the nation, that we stand by those allies. I think that's part of the uh, the role of Congress to continue to advocate uh, on behalf of our allies around the globe and ultimately 
be working towards a more safe uh, global environment. You have, have stated that, uh, that climate change is a major issue, that it is real, that it happens. Um, I'm sure you've heard, as I have, that, that the military experts look at climate change as a, as a national security issue, that it is affecting global stability. Do you see any awareness in, among, in Congress or in the administration for the role that that plays in global security? I think there's conversations that are going on on a, on a regular basis about how we tackle uh, what we're seeing uh, climate globally. I think the key to that is how do we continue to develop technology uh, and advance that piece of the puzzle uh, rather than kind of the top heavy-handed government approach uh, addressing climate change. But I think it's, I, as you've noted, I believe it's real. And then it's what do policymakers do to go in and address this problem on a global scale, not to address this problem from an economic U.S.-centric view. It's a global global issue that needs a bit of a, of a global approach. And I think the real key underlying this is some of the technological developments uh, that are, we're on the cusp of coming online and are starting to with wind uh, and solar uh, and other options that we're already seeing in our state here. So maybe this is a way to, to, to get into this issue about the deficit, but in terms of priorities, you know, as you're thinking about the most important issues facing our country, many would say climate change is one, um, others would say budget and, and, and deficit is another. This week, of course, we've had a, another prediction, the 10-year prediction, a trillion-dollar deficit. Yeah. Uh, how does that, what, what are your priorities there? Uh, the, the, the federal debt and deficit is of paramount importance. Uh, and the fact that we are roughly $20 trillion in debt and adding roughly another trillion dollars to that every single year is a real serious problem. We're borrowing money, uh, not just from ourselves and from future generations, uh, but also from foreign countries to, s to fund what we're required to spend today. That's a long-term problem and eventually uh, becomes a national security problem. I think one of the, the real key focuses there is Washington is broken as to the process in which we go about spending money. Every time we go through the spending process, everybody walks away unhappy. Everybody's frustrated with the end result. And every year we spend more than we did the year before. Regardless of party. Regardless of party. party. And so I look at it from a bit of a manufacturing background. I spent 10 years in the manufacturing industry before I ran. And if you're running a factory and you keep producing a bad product, the first thing you would do, stop the line and go figure out what's wrong in the process. And so I've been working with some of my colleagues on what I think are actually pretty straightforward changes in the process. It's not exciting uh, to sit and talk about, but I think if you just even went and did two simple examples of that, if you changed from budgeting every year to budgeting every two years, like we do in the state of Wisconsin, you'd get a more thoughtful, more delivered, deliberative approach in Washington. Right. Would it save everything? No. But it would allow you to have a conversation to prioritize spending in a much more thoughtful way than we do today. I'm also advocating ending shutdowns, taking them off the table. Put in place a continuing resolution, similar to what we have in the state of Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin never shuts our state government down. What we do is we fund flat the year, at the same level as the year before. Is that a good option? No. But is it a better default option than the alternative, which is shutting the entire federal government down? That's a terrible, terrible answer. We tried it. doesn't work. We should take that off the table. Those types of process changes, I think in the end, will result in a much more thoughtful, deliberative spending process and begin to chip away at this massive federal spending problem that we have. Well, when we come back, tell us what you're hearing from the 1st Congressional District. And we'll do that with Congressman Brian Stile right after this. The new unlimited plan from U.S. Cellular is now just $30, the best value in wireless. Plus, our award-winning network just got even faster. It's time to stop wasting money. Visit U.S. Cellular today and get the best value in wireless. Unlimited data for only $30 a month on a network ranked number one for network quality performance. Building your next generation network. My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. 
I'm a better neighbor because my service has taught me how important it is to be a team player. My training helps me in my classes when I must give attention to detail to the task at hand. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting nationalguard.com. Every internet and TV provider promises you their best, but the other guys have that. And this little mark hides some big restrictions, like the fact you have to sign a contract. And they have early termination fees. And that you'll have to pay extra for an internet modem and security software. With Spectrum, you get our best every day with no contracts, no early termination fees, and dozens of extras free, like a free modem and security suite with Spectrum Internet, delivering more speed more consistently for the best surfing, streaming, and gaming. Get Spectrum Internet for $44.99 a month. Call 855-646-4499. Then enjoy the best in entertainment with Spectrum TV, with more HD and more free on demand. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Month. Upgrade to the best. Get Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each. Call 855-646-4499. News 3 Now and Channel 3000 put top stories and breaking news at your fingertips. Video alerts and forecasts. Download the Channel 3000 app today. I'm back with Wisconsin Congressman Brian Stile from the 1st Congressional District. Um, nice long recess here, Congressman. Get to spend some time in the district and at home. How have been spending the, your days, and what are you hearing from your constituents? I spend a ton of my time on the road talking to people about how we can improve Washington and what policies we need to put in place. I think paramount issue is how do we continue the economic growth that we've seen. The 1st Congressional District runs from Janesville over to Lake Michigan to Racine and Kenosha and the area uh, in between. We've seen great economic turnaround both in Janesville and Racine, but we're not done yet. And so how do we as, uh, as policymakers focus in on the policies that are going to be required to continue this economic growth that we've seen? We're also struggling uh, in large part with the rising cost of health care. And that's an issue that, that needs to be addressed and tackled. We need to go after uh, the rising costs of uh, medicine and make sure that we're empowering individuals to make health care choices on their own. But more than anything that I'm seeing out there is we're making progress economically. Jobs are coming back to our region, uh, but now we need to make further progress to allow individuals to continue to climb up the wage scale. Are you hearing anything um, in, in Washington or from people in the first that would support the, the fear, the concern that another recession is imminent? You know, we're always concerned about any future downturn, but I think what we need to be doing from a policymaker perspective is continuing to put policies in place that allow us to continue the investment towards jobs and higher wages. Uh, and so I continue to look for opportunities as to what policies can we put in place at a federal level to continue to grow the economy. Uh, but there's always that concern uh, about what's around the corner. Uh, but we want to always be encouraging that investment in our communities uh, to continue the growth that we've seen. I saw um, a release from your office, Congressman, on a, on a, a children's mental health forum, and it just it kind of caught my interest. Um, you seem to take it very seriously, and, and um, w what did you hear? I think mental health is one of the kind of the next frontiers that we need to really tackle as a nation. Uh, there's uh, the Racine Unified School District uh, is one of the that's leaders. That's where the forum was. And that's where the Racine, forum was. Right, we, brought right. it, we brought it into Park High School. They're one of the leaders at bringing mental health care into the school rather than having the student go to the provider. So if you think about that, if you had a son or daughter uh, that needed that care, uh, say the appointment's at 1 o'clock, you might take them out at lunch, the appointment ends at 1.30, you might not take them back, they miss the whole afternoon. The alternative is have the provider come to the school and address the student. You might pull the student out to say art class. Out of art class, back in, it's a pretty seamless transition. We need to make sure that students who are in need of mental health care are receiving it where they need it and when they need it. And we're gonna avoid problems in the long term if we address it up on the front end. Some of this really started uh, as I began uh, to examine what we can do for our veterans 
uh, in our veterans community. The suicide rate, as everyone knows, uh, is abysmal uh, in the veterans community. It's an issue that we need to absolutely put front and center. As I started to dig into this problem, one of the things that I've observed is the stigma associated with individuals going and obtaining uh, the mental health care that they need. That's true in the veterans community. It's also true uh, in, with students. And so bringing together uh, mental health care providers, student counselors, uh, as well as uh, representatives from the Department of Education and Health and Human Services, uh, it was a forum where we could discuss what are the best practices uh, for parents and for students, but also for teachers and school districts so that we can start to tackle this problem, remove the stigma, and really provide a lot of service for our students. Your response after that forum was that you would take what you learned back to Washington. What, what would your steps be that would uh, uh, be a result of that? Hey, well, I've, I've been able to already have conversations with my colleagues, Democrats and Republicans, about the impact that a good mental health care program has on the overall health uh, of, our, of our students uh, and of society. Uh, and again, if you go back just to that example as it relates to veterans, making sure that our veterans are receiving the mental health care that they need, how do we remove that stigma uh, for our veterans community. Uh, that's an issue that just bridges uh, some of this partisan divide and in an era of divided government like we've talked about. Mm -hmm. That's an area where we can come together and tackle one of those problems. That's, uh, that is an appropriate role for the federal government to support that kind of work. Absolutely, in, per in no place more uh, than in our veterans community. Right. Uh, and some of it is just highlighting the issue, talking about it, helps remove that stigma and might allow a few more individuals to feel comfortable to go in and receive the help that they need early on so that the, the, what they're seeing today doesn't result in a larger problem down the road. Congressman, thanks very much. Thank nice, you very nice much. Everyone. Let's do this again. Sounds good. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. company for the future through the power of working together committed to cleaner more sustainable energy driven by innovation fostered by shared values energy 2030 together.com for two decades news 3 now and channel 3000 have paid tribute to top-notch teachers nominated by our viewers every month we spotlight and salute an area teacher and we want to hear about your favorite if you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Top-notch teachers, sponsored by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Update your floors with Empire Today's $50 room sale. Buy one room, get floors for all other rooms for just $50 each. So when you buy one room, it's only $50 for laminate in the kitchen, $50 for carpet in the bedroom, and $50 for hardwood in the office. There's no limit. Buy one room, and it's $50 for floors in each additional room. Schedule now. 800-588-2300 Empire Today. Adventure is stylish at Don Miller Subaru. It's the Subaru A Lot to Love event and the 2019 Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium has so much for you, all standard. Get EyeSight Driver Assist Technology, all-wheel drive plus MPG. Lease the Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium from $269 a month plus tax, 36 months, 10,000 miles a year, no security deposit, 1969 due at signing, 0% financing available. Don Miller Subaru, West on Odana or Eastside, High Crossing Boulevard, Madison. Don Miller. MG&E, building a community energy company for the future through the power of working together, committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Energy2030together.com. My thanks to Congressman Brian Stile and to you for joining us. We'll see you next week on For the Record.